Hello? Can you? Yes, I can hear you now. I think everyone is in. Okay. Uh, we need to refresh uh, the browser. So log in again. Um, so we can start. Yeah, I think good. there are some bugs. Yeah, some bugs. Yeah, that's why uh, testing is very important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I'll inform them that. Hopefully this way we have something from the conference and then uh, apply to their workflow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This was very strange. Uh, yeah, it's this working now. Didn't happen. I think there's some bug, uh, so it crashed. Bug, I think now it's okay, right? Yeah, it's okay now. Everyone is in now. Uh, let's wait for John to join. Okay. Uh, or um, we we want to ask uh, John to share John to share his screen, okay? <laughs> because it happens when he tried to to share the screen. I don't know how he and if it's related. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but... that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I see John Miko here. Ah, he's in now. Okay, yeah, so yes. yeah, so let's. Uh, sorry for that technical uh, problem. Uh, hopefully, it, uh, we don't have it anymore. Uh, so uh, yeah, so let's start with the second video today. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I would like to welcome John Miko. Okay. So John is. Uh, Oops, I'm no, a printer. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, how uh, industry actually do investing and how it connects to the uh, academic yeah. So John worked a lot on uh, uh, 20 years. He he was at Google. He uh, owned the uh, developed the uh, the Google CI, which is by anti Google engineer, like forty thousand engineers sharing the same system. Yeah, that's it. Like the, the biggest one, and the second one is Facebook, like ten times less, right? So yeah, so let me start uh, the video, and then people can ask question live in the chat, or you can uh, ask uh, after the talk. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Miko. I'm here from uh, VMware to give this talk about CI and CD. Done for the last.
Right. Thank you, John. It's a very interesting question. Uh, very interesting presentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, hello, um, John, can you hear me? Yes, I can, can you hear you. Hear all right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, this is a very interesting topic and it has applicability in industry, obviously. And the tape, and you were mentioning the uh, plate tests. And obviously, from what I understand, is that the, the flaky tests happen or they occur because every time you run the same version or same configuration, uh, one time it runs successfully and then one time it runs unsuccessfully, same parameters. But uh, is it possible that one of the reasons why these uh, flaky tests really happen is because of some kind of outside constraints that are not related to code transitions and all other other oh. parts of code, such as, for example, uh, let me tell, let me think about it, because you are doing this at the runtime. So, is it possible that when you when the code goes through some functionality, it may take, let's say, on the first pass, it takes. 10 seconds to run one functionality, same functionality, but on the second run, for some reason, it takes 15 seconds. And for that reason, because the other function is expecting the output in a certain time frame, then these kind of flakes may occur. And these are things that probably cannot be easily um, captured because it's all in a runtime. And this also reflects performance concerns so that like it do you have any idea maybe it could this be one of the reasons this is just my thought process so, that i'm not so, sure so if, I'm, if i'm in the right right direction it is certainly true that one of the most prevalent causes of flakiness is uh timing issues um, and it's funny, one of the things we observed very much at Google and also at VMware, it, we remember I talked about how we load up our testing systems with high CPU utilization and high right, memory utilization, right. lots of contention for this core. Um, mm -hmm. What happens in such cases is tests run at a different pace just because the machine is either more heavily loaded or lightly loaded, and that can cause race conditions with the test. Maybe it's not interlocked. Maybe it says sleep five. And yeah. if you ever see it, if you're reviewing a test and it says sleep yeah. five, you you want to yeah. tell the author that that's not a good test, right? <laughs> because <laughs> because it's likely that that's yeah. going to cause a flake at some point. So so yes, and and the other thing that you mentioned in your your statement there, which I'll also key on is it's not just timing related. So anything that you don't control over, right? So for example, in our testing pool at VMware, we're using, I don't know, seven different machine configurations and profiles and different kinds of hardware and software layer that, that can interfere or affect the way a test works. We had some test flakiness there that was caused, whenever this test ran on one of these machines, it would always fail. Whenever it went, ran on one of those machines, it would always pass. And depending on which machine you got, it would either pass or fail. And it looked yeah. like flakiness to the test author, right? It fails sometimes and it passes sometimes because we weren't controlling for which machines it was getting. And if it got one of the bad ones, it would fail. And if it got one of the good ones, it would pass. Um, so guess what? We started controlling for that. We only let that test run on the machines where it would work and, and got rid of that flakiness, right? So, so th there's all kinds of examples of things like that. Also, not everyone controls all of their library dependencies, like which browser might be installed on a machine might be different. All of those kinds of things can kind of impact your testing and make it flaky. So, so uh, it, it, there haven't been, an, I, I'd say there haven't been enough studies of all of the causes of flakiness and what, what they do. We need more work in that area. Um, but it's, in, in fact, many, academ many people in uh, academic, academics don't want to study this because they believe that the test should be deterministic and that there shouldn't exist any flaky tests but none of the testing systems I've seen at scale can actually eliminate it as a cause. Right. Well, thank you. And, and this is another follow-up. So, so does this mean that maybe researchers have to, because all of the constraints that you've been mentioning, probably just the, the race condition and perhaps portability issues with some extra devices added to the system and, and all kinds of stuff. These mostly, to me, seem to relate to uh, non-functional concerns of the software, yes. which I have seen that 
a lot of researchers do work in the area, but not as much as it's needed because everybody is trying to to kind of kind of leave behind the, the testing on non-functional requirements because yeah. it's very hard to uh, or feasibly uh, I don't know they're not tangible because we cannot yeah. see them we cannot touch them so uh, <laughs> is it because uh, this is the reason why we still deal with flaky tests and then researchers are kind of afraid not that they're afraid but they're not really well, willing to go that route <laughs> Think about it. Most researchers don't have a lab with, you know, millions of computers in it that are different. <laughs> it's, it, it's harder to study that kind of thing, right? And in fact, yeah. they, they have to do they have to do industrial collaboration to, to get into those environments and actually try those kinds of things. So, so yes, I think there's a certain reticence to study it. The, the, yeah, I, I'll just, I don't know, I, I'll go there a little bit. One of the things that really makes me nervous about things like fuzz testing and things like, um, is, is because if your test oracle is not uh, stable, if there's any flakiness in your test oracle, then you can drive to totally the wrong conclusions with your fuzzing. It's like, yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. so it's like the whole thing is kind of interesting. Um, but, but yes, in in every industrial setting I've seen, it's been uh, a, a thing that the practitioners have to contend with is, is this flakiness. So probably the Google Google people can can can. I mean, they have probably the. The infrastructure to to kind of guard themselves towards this direction. You know? Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. like maybe to look at this at this high scale. I mean, I can understand the industry. I mean, academia can handle also the, the theoretical aspect of it. How if it's going to work or not? And maybe the industry can people can make it more applicable. I mean, I worked in industry before too, so it's. It's a little bit different how it works in academia, and it's way different how it works in the industry. But yeah. I think kind of uh, bridging these two together only on this matter, maybe you know, look, we will be in a, this in is a the kind direction. of thing. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I, one of the reasons I'm here at an academic conference talking to you at all is because yeah. this is something I'm passionate about, and I want to see more academic industrial collaboration on these kinds of things. Uh, there's been really good work on flakiness done at Microsoft and Google and Facebook, um, and they've not. They're now starting to write papers about it with with you know students and with researchers. And I think yeah. those those collaborations have been great for the state of the art. So I just want to see more and more of that. So I'm glad you're excited about it, and maybe <laughs> maybe happy. you'll come and collaborate with us, and and we'll be able to do some nice paper together. It'll be yeah, fun. Yeah, I have to push my advisor <laughs> to take the initiative. <laughs> Thank you very much for your wonderful talk, though. I I got some great insights from the presentation itself and uh, discussing with you as well. Well, thank you. Happy to help. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> thank yeah, you. I think the that's a gap between industry and uh, academia, and that's why we have a lot of industry people in this conference too. Yeah. So uh, I uh, let me uh, so like in the in the comment that interest like. Uh, Secret had raised a very interesting question. Uh, like we see that like author Carl also like a good predictor for uh for fall and pretty uh, and uh flakiness. What do you think about that, John? So I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not. I, I'm. I was trying to read the the comments in the yeah. in the chat so, while you were talking. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the 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 author the the CI uh the, the CI author Carl also a good. Uh -huh. For, uh, for 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 test quality. Involved. Yeah, that that's a pretty crazy result, right? It's not. It, 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 so this is why I'm I'm I, we we one of the reasons why we did this sort of work to try to evaluate regression test selection is because who would have thought that author count was a feature, right? How how many people? How many different people have changed a file? Like not not a thing, but several studies have now confirmed that somebody posted in the chat there was another study that confirmed that same result. Um and. It, it just at Google, we actually looked at some of these files that had changed a lot and, and caused breakages. And most of them were like configuration files or they weren't code, they weren't core code files, but they were things that could cause breakages to the build system and to the test system. So so it was kind of interesting that, that when many people were changing them, maybe no one is an expert. Uh, maybe uh, people change this file because it's some common thing that they all need to, to work on. Um, but it was astonishing that that was the, the best feature uh, at predicting whether a test was going to break was how many, you know, this change 
how many authors you know changed this this file um very interesting to see how, how that how that was correlated and how it showed up in our in our uh, evaluation there. yeah that was very interesting yeah mm -hmm. is there any question from audience Yeah, because I as uh, secret, she also have a comment on the uh, <coughs> in the comment. Uh, I think that's also very interesting. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. basically, uh, flakiness is is something people are aware of, but like people we people, people uh, we never publish or you know kind of, you know explicitly talk about. Uh, everyone explained it, but like no yeah. one. Yeah, no I, I, I I want to comment on that a little bit. I I I think we we looked. I mean, I've seen a lot of um evaluation of flaky tests but not probably as much as as any as we should there's never been i mean there's a few studies of your very some very small studies uh jinjo lu one of my interns did a study on flake on the root causes of flakiness but let me say this the 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 assumption that it's bad test architecture uh isn't borne out by what i've seen uh, oftentimes in fact at google some of the most uh, persistent low level flakiness that wasn't very high probability was actually coming from production code um, and it was a problem that our customers were experiencing at some very low rate. Um, and, and we were catching it with, with tests. I've seen that, that pattern happen quite frequently. Um, but you know, it's what we, what it, anecdotally, what, what I, what, what we, when we did a little study, a small one at, at Google, we saw that about a third was coming from test code or test setup or test architecture. Like maybe they did a sleep, maybe they did, they didn't wait properly, whatever, stuff like that, timing issues, uh, other things, right? Um, and about a third came from the code under test, which was like, you know, some real problem in your production code that your customers are experiencing. And about a third came from infrastructure where some thing would happen during the, uh, you know, the running of the test. Uh, maybe uh, the whole machine would oom um out of memory or who knows what, right? And it would cause a problem. So, so yeah, I, I, I don't wanna, I don't think it's just, uh, and in fact, at, at MathWorks when I was there, um, they took the best developers in the company and put them on a project to eliminate all flakiness. Let's just get rid of it all, right? And those guys went off and they fixed a bunch of things, right? And and by the time they were done, we had about the same number of flakes. Why? Because people were inserting new flakiness at the same rate as they were fixing it, and we gave up. So that was, you know, it was we spent about six months trying to fix flakiness, all the flakiness, and couldn't do it. So may I ask one more question? Sure. So, John, uh, we experienced an issue uh, right when your presentation started. It must have been for a reason. So, <laughs> do you think <laughs> that what happened just today, because we were not, we were baffled, our team, we were not able to figure out what happened. Uh, everything was running smoothly, and then all of a sudden, abruptly, we all were all kicked out of the program. So, mm -hmm. do you think this is some kind of that's flakiness happening here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it could be something that wasn't covered by a test, which, you know, yeah. like, you know, uh, something, some such thing could easily cause such a problem, or it could be some kind of flakiness that happens once in a while and maybe yeah. isn't being noticed as a real production code issue. I mean, look, uh, both things happen. And I, I, I just want to say that I'm not aware of an industrial setting where this truism about flakiness doesn't hold. Right. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Well, I mean, we are not saying that Midspace is not great. I think so far we have <laughs> been doing everything right. It's just we've been experiencing some weird issues that kind of intrigues us to find out why, why, why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy to help. Is there any other question from audience? Uh, Secret, you want to add something or yeah, yeah, good. Um, okay. Right. So, well, I, again, thank you, Bao, for inviting me here to, to, to talk. And uh, I, I always enjoy giving these presentations and hopefully people got something out of it. Yeah, well, I have a question. <laughs> sure. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so in this CI system, basically you are, so is it a traditional CI system when we work with like code uh, system, right? But like, how do you think that's one in evolve evolve uh, with the like uh, ML software? Uh, how does CI? Well, we we need the this is a research area, a big research area. We really need a different way for evaluating.